Okay, hello, 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 and welcome to the latest installment of And Sarah Appeared. My name is Sarah, and I'm appearing before you today because um, I'm continuing with the um, epiphany that Jesus gave me about what was going on with my soul and parts of my soul kind of being just scattered um, to the point where I was not able to, I was paralyzed in allowing God to love me. Um, I didn't understand couldn't conceptualize how God could love me even though I knew I loved him I wasn't so trusting of him and that was bleeding over into um, friendships and love relationships as well as for me so one of the things that I was um, I had the epiphany of with after I like, was literally crying out to God you know asking him what is this what is wrong because um I've been obviously I've had a problem with pride and I've had I've, I've been allowing God to deal with me with that pride and part of how he's been dealing with me is through the act of forcibly forcibly you know exposing everything about me that I wanted to cover up, but then forcing me to talk about things that were uncomfortable and that had to peel back layers of pride and expose layers of vulnerability into my life. So it's been catastrophic, and but it's also been very freeing. It has allowed me to breathe. I'm more of a human being today than I was a year ago than I was three months ago okay so I'm more free today but I I'm still fragmented so I'm free but I'm fragmented as well this is where Jesus has to step in and this is where he's been doing the work through me in my life so what's been going on is just like there was a false Jesus or a false consciousness of Christ that I was subscribing to. And now I'm coming into the realization that there is a real Christ that I have to get into and not an anti-Christ spirit that I've been worshiping. But there is um, also a false sense of my nature that I have been subscribing to. Now, my nature is supposed to reflect the nature of Christ, but it can't do that if I'm you know, obviously with the, with the wrong guy, right? Um, if I'm, if I'm subscribing to the wrong, to the wrong Christ, if I, if I'm doing an anti-Christ thing and I, I don't have the Holy Spirit in me. And so what's been going on is I've been using my ego as a defense mechanism and my ego is literally pride. Um, so I've been using it as a defense mechanism to keep me from getting hurt again because the problem was I never was really taught boundaries and I never really knew to because of um I I would say a, a demonic ploy on my concentration to keep me frustrated and to keep me focused on going into um working constantly and constantly frustrated and serving and constantly frustrated and um putting myself last I completely avoided anything that needed because I put myself last I put God last because God has to do a work in me in order for his light to shine through me to the world so if I'm putting addiction before God, if I'm putting work before God, if I'm taking care of everybody and everything before I take care of myself, then I'm putting God on the back burner and I'm saying you don't really matter because I'm not taking care of my mental health. I'm not taking care of my emotional health. I'm not taking care of my self-care. Now, with that being said, when I start to do that and I align with the true nature of who God is in my life, then that's when I'm able from a place of organic joy to give back to others. That's when I'm able to hear God more clearly. That's when I'm able to 
allow the part of me that is a loving, giving, kind, caring person to flow out of me because I'm focused on what God, how God wants my soul and my spirit not only to operate, but how he wants it to look how he what state is my soul in what state is my spirit in and in order to do that it called it called for me to cut out a lot of nonsense and a lot of non-variables and a lot of factors that had nothing to do with Christ in fact a lot of stuff that we carry in our everyday lives I'm coming to find out a lot of emotions and small things and things that we don't let go. It's Luciferian. It's satanic. For you to be constantly concerned with everything and God said that he to cast your cares onto him. And you're not casting your cares onto him. You're holding the cares within you. It's satanic energy. It's so satanic. And I, I literally had to have a release and I was crying out to God because I, I couldn't understand what was the blockage. And Jesus told me, your soul is fragmented and you've been avoiding the, the parts of your soul that are just out there fragmented instead of allowing me to heal you what you've been doing is um trying to get the next high um trying to prove yourself throwing yourself into work and unnecessary servitude because there's a necessary servitude and then there's unnecessary servitude and then also masking yourself with dogmatic beliefs, traditionalism, um, masking yourself with uh, the religious spirit. I, at least I don't do things this way. But you can't hear from God. And there's people who are doing everything every which way and they can hear from him cl more clearly than you can because you can't see your soul and you can't see your spirit and in order to do that for me as a Christian I've got to get into the truth of who Christ is and if I'm in a spirit of antichrist then I'm thinking I'm doing things the right way but I'm not I'm spinning my wheels and I'm in a state of frustration so this year, God had to literally come into my life and he had to say, you know, pour into me that I was worthy enough to be loved by him. Um, I had to let go of the control of what was going on in my mind. There was a lot of fear, guilt, and shame that was running rampant in me. A lot of self-doubt and a lot of self-loathing, but that was because of there was the undealt with trauma and things that had been like demonically imparted onto me that I didn't realize that I didn't know and I was eating myself like a flesh eating amoeba um eating myself and tearing myself down through sabotage because for years I was so used to the false lie that I wasn't worth anything and that if you allow anything or anybody to come into your life and love you, what you're going to be left with is nothing and destitute. Because the people that I trusted to love me for years had um, incorrectly replaced the love with harm. And I believe that they did that because of their own brokenness. I really can't just go on the attack and say, you're a monster, because I became the very monster that um, came after me. I became my own monster, and I started tearing myself and tearing others down because of not allowing this frustration and this rage that I had in me to be tr 
like literally transmuted in prayer and praise. I didn't sing over my situation. I didn't praise God. So part of that pride in me was also, you know, looking and seeing what was going on and what the problem with me was, but not giving the problem over to God because I really don't trust who you are. And I don't know who you are. And I, the reason why I didn't, so I, I had this false pretense of who God was because of this upbringing and this background that God was an oppressive force. But really, that was an antichrist spirit. Antichrist spirit is oppressive and judgmental. And yes, God will uh, rebuke you and he will chasten you and he will tell you, you know, I expect better of you. But in the middle of wrath, God is so good that he'll still cover you in the middle of a wrath. He'll, he's so good that he'll still uphold you in the middle of, um, of turmoil and a rebuke. Even when it's something that you deserve, he'll still take care of you and he'll hold you in that. He won't let your life come completely undone. He sees who you are and he sees your brokenness. And he just wants you to allow him into your life to be able to fill the void that you've been spinning your wheels trying to understand what is this? Like, why? What? what is going on with me? Why am I not able to respond? Or what is the void? What is the, the brokenness? Why can't I see? this why why what is going on with me um that's where he comes in because he's the one that painted the picture in the first place he's the potter and we're the clay so if you're broken he can that's where the mosaic comes in he'll put the pieces back together and make a completely different picture and Colossians 3 and 12 to 13 says, put on them as God, put on then as God chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And resentment and bitterness will allow you to be completely deaf dumb and blind to the spirit of humility that is within christ because you feel like nobody has given me grace nobody has given me mercy and so the first aspect of love that i was rejecting was through my brokenness was the love of the father because all of the grace and the mercy and the love and the acceptance that I needed um, for that aspect of my life was going to be for that aspect of my love walk was going to be in him and I had to find the true him in order to accept that he is accepting of me and he wants the best for me and it's okay, I can let go of control and I can allow him into my life as my Lord, my, save, my Savior, but most importantly, my Abba Father.